Hello, hello, welcome, welcome, hello, hello, and welcome. I'm Dan, your friendly fishmonger at dansfish.com. I'd like to thank you for being here with us tonight. We do this every Wednesday, 7 p.m. Mountain Time. That's 9 Eastern for those of you that don't know where the mountains are. We have an exciting lineup tonight. A lot has happened since we last met. We, we actually had to skip last week's live stream because I was out of town. I went to Los Angeles to, to set up an import hub. Um, and I'll tell you all about that and how that went. Um, give you the shipping report. We have a cool giveaway tonight. These are Odessa barbs, but not just any Odessa barbs. These were bred and raised by a hobbyist here in the United States, Mirik. Thank you for raising these awesome fish. And Mirik's parents came from Greg Sage at Select Aquatics. So these are the Select Aquatics line of Odessa barbs. If you don't know what that is, check out Select Aquatics YouTube channel and search Odessa barbs. Um, oh, would you grab that? <laughs> Sorry, I'm siphoning a tank. <laughs> and it's starting to slurp. <laughs> Don't worry, there's no fish in it. It's just a, a quarantine tank we're emptying out. Um, anyway, Greg Sage has been working a line of Odessa barbs for, ooh, is it 10 years, maybe? I, I don't know how long, but a long time. And so these are those. They get amazing black on them, bright yellow on the fins, and bright red on the males across the body. Really, really nice strain. So that's what we'll be giving away tonight, and we'll tell you more about that. Um, I have an update on the construction and some pictures to show you. We've made good progress. Um, tell you about the import we got in. Tell you about some updates we're making to the website. And very exciting news about collaborating with an aquatic veterinarian that I will reveal tonight as well. So that's the docket. After that, we'll get to all your questions and comments. And uh, if you have questions about breeding fish, raising fish, keeping fish, setting up fish rooms, um, <laughs> constructing warehouses for fish, oh, I, I, can, I can answer most things. I'm really bad at aquatic plants, and I don't know anything about salt water. But most other things... Um, I can help with and if I can't there'll be someone in this community that knows more about it than I do well there almost always is about everything but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll crowdsource it for you so let's start with the shipping report so shipping report is mixed I hate to say it oh before I go further I just want to double check that people can hear me because um, and, and the audio and video is working okay before I go too long. Would one of the mods let me know if, if everything's kosher with the video and the audio? So while they're doing that, let me get to the shipping report. It's, it's mixed. Um, I, I shipped out... So everything has arrived alive since we last talked. But here at Dance Fish, we don't just track what gets to you alive. Our goal is to make it thrive for you long term. So we also track um, if things survive long term for you. So everything has arrived um, alive, but there were some things that passed away after they arrived. So one of these was one roseline barb. This happened, I sent these out last week, and then this week, audio and video are good. All right, thanks Fishers Aquatics for letting me know. Kayla's Aquatics saying sound and pick are great. Maria Z letting me know. Okay, all right, good, good, good. I just hate when it's bad and I go for half an hour and before I realize it's bad, right? That, that ain't good for anybody. Anyway, sent a Roseline Barb out that they received. I, I believe we shipped it out on Thursday. And then yesterday got a notice from a customer that one had passed away. They ordered a group. Um, so I got a nice clear picture from that customer. There was nothing obvious on the Roseline Barb. I, I, it wasn't skinny. It didn't have any spots on it. Um, so we don't have any idea what happened. Um, and basically where we're at is I've asked the customer, look, keep an eye on them. If there's any other problems, please let me know. Um, hopefully it's a one-time random incident, but we'll keep track of the rest of the batch. And if there's more problems, or if any one of you who have got them from me recently, if you've had problems, if you'd let us know, you can email me that information, dan at dancefish.com. Um, if you want to keep it private, but we're open here. So if you don't mind making it public, you can just leave a comment. Just uh, if you make it at symbol dance fish, so it turns bright orange for me like this one here, then I'll see it better. Um, and let me know if you've had any problems. The reason I do this is it, it helps me as a fish seller and, and a keeper of fish know if I have a problem. Sometimes when a problem is incubating in the fish, 
it doesn't manifest for a long, long time. And sometimes shipping that fish to someone, the, the, just the stress of going through shipping can manifest the problem. So I'm hoping this is just an isolated incident, just a random thing, but if more of that batch or if any one of you that have got them from me recently have had problems, please let me know because if lots of them are having problems, what that means probably, or at least possibly, is that there's something in my batch that is not manifesting because they're nice and calm in the tank, but that I need to take a look at and see if I can figure out before I send any more out. So that's why I like to give these reports. It, it, a, it keeps me honest, and it keeps everyone here doing a good job because we know we have to tell you every week <laughs> if anything died or had problems, right? So it makes us be very, very careful and detail-oriented when we select fish and pack fish and care for fish and quarantine fish and all that. Um, but the other thing is it's a great way to crowdsource early problem detection. So I always appreciate it when people reach out and let me know if there's a problem. Please don't ever feel like you're bothering us. Um, we're here to help and it helps us when we get that information. So anyway, that was problem number one. Problem number two were two rainbow fish. Now we haven't, we skipped last week's live stream. So these were actually shipped out, I think like three weeks ago. So this is, this is like a three week report <laughs> spanning three weeks. Um, they got there alive and everything and, and all that. So I didn't report it the last time I saw you because I didn't know at that time that there was an issue but later the customer sent me some pictures I think one of them made it and recovered um, but one of them never recovered and was swimming funny and things so there are two rainbow fish that were having problems I think one of them recovered and one didn't so that's the report uh, basically for the last three weeks two and a half weeks um, two fish made it, arrived alive, but did not thrive long term, and one arrived, had some issues, but if I'm remembering right, I think that, um, I think it recovered. Um, but geez, I haven't re read that email thread for about two weeks, so forgive me, I, I, it might have not recovered, but I think it did. But anyway, that's the report. Um, I want to give you a construction update, and for that, let's take you to Instagram. So this is our lot when they were first start, starting to um, clear the, the ground, right? So they're just starting to do that. And then here is when they got the building pad completed, which is important. The, the cement slab foundation will be poured on top of and on the side of this. And then they started doing the um, framing for the foundation. You can see here some of it's done, but we had a really rainy week last week, and so they weren't able to finish. They almost got finished. And then I'm happy to announce that yesterday they finished. So now this, or I'm sorry, was it yesterday? Yes, yesterday they finished. Um, so now here is the building pad. Here's all the cement framing, and they're gonna pour the cement on top of and down the sides of this. Um, so that's all done. That, and I know it just looks like dirt, smooth dirt, and it is. <laughs> well, it's not just dirt, it's like a specially engineered fill that will be stable long term, but um, you wouldn't believe like how long it takes to do this with permitting and surveyors having to come and check everything and getting the uh, contractor to come over and, and find the time and equipment to do the work and everything. So this is great progress for us. I'm really happy to announce that tomorrow they're going to start the under slab plumbing work. What that means is this is very inefficient, but it's really the, the way the industry works. They are now going to dig through a bunch of this and lay a whole bunch of complicated pipe work in here um, for all the drains and supply um, to the building that will then be covered by cement. So all the under slab plumbing is going to go in here. So this nice, pretty um, cake, <laughs> sheet cake looking building pad is about to get dug up. <laughs> They'll put all that in and then the dirt contractor, the foundation contractor will come back, smooth it all back out and then they'll pour cement. Um, they expect to be done. Oh, I hate. Yeah, I'm not going to say. Whenever I say when they'll be done by, it's always three times as long. So who cares? Let's just say that they're going to start soon <laughs> and, um, and progress has been made. So 
That feels really good on our end because it's been a long time coming. Um, another exciting thing to tell you about is we have brought an aquatic veterinarian on board. Um, so we're working with Dr. Martinez. This just got finalized yesterday. I've been um, talking to several different aquatic vets, trying to find the right one, one that was willing to take on this project. But Dr. Martinez is willing. So yesterday, we packed up several fish from the new import, any, any species that wasn't rock solid. Um, anything that was like, ooh, those look a little shaky, or a couple of these have passed away, or these guys aren't eating as well as we think they should be. Um, anytime we noticed, or obvious disease symptoms on a few of them, anytime we noticed something. So we sent a box of fish to the doctor yesterday. He received them this morning, and he's doing a workup on them. So our what we're trying to do with this is get a good sense of which suppliers have which issues, right? So these fish came from a single supplier and after going through all these species and having the veterinarian exam them and work them up, um, we'll get a good sense of what's going on. What that means for the future is if we know, hey, the quarries from this supplier always come with this specific issue, I, I'm, I'm just picking a random group of fish, right? Could be anything. Um, but if the quarries come and they, they frequently have this issue, then we know that we need to have medicines and be ready to treat for that when those fish come. And depending on what the issue is, we might need to prophylactically treat for it. So it's just a way for us to do a better job of helping fish thrive when they get here. Um, right now we're like everyone else. We just kind of shotgun stuff. We're like, okay, we'll throw an antibiotic at you. Hopefully that'll work. Oh, that's not working. Okay, tried that for a week, no improvement. We'll stop that. Now we're going to throw an antifungal at you. Maybe that white slime isn't a bacteria after all. Maybe it's a fungus. We try that. Oh, that worked greater. Oh, that didn't work. Um, now I don't know what to do. Maybe there's a parasite digging in there that looks like that and is causing an infection and stuff. So let's try to get rid of the parasite. So we're just guessing like everyone else. Now, we try to be educated guessers and we try to treat in a way that is most likely of course to solve the problem um, but we're leveling up now so now we have an aquatic veterinarian working with us to actually diagnose the actual issue so we know how to target it instead of just shotgunning medicines like everyone does um, it'll also be helpful because there are times like those um, red-eyed red hyphen sword tails that we had a few years ago. Um, a veterinarian worked those up. They went to a lab for histiography and found, oh, they have a virus. Well, now I know not to buy those anymore, right? So it'll also help me kind of curate what I get. Um, from which suppliers and, and just get better stock in general and care for them better. So I'm very excited about this. This is a long time coming and I think it's going to make a big, big difference in um, our ability to care for fish properly from the, from the beginning, from when we very first get them. So I'm excited. Um, another update, we'll get to the giveaway momentarily here but another thing is Jonathan um, some of you know him as random arms he's been coding away uh, like crazy to get the website improved there one of the biggest requests we got when we launched getgills.com was to be able to pay with PayPal everybody wanted that and we we spent geez I don't know couple of weeks coding and trying to figure that out there's just no way to do it like PayPal's product is not as great <laughs> as users think it is like from the user end it's super easy you just go and you pay but from on the back end trying to work with that juggernaut it's it's not great so they literally did not have the functionality to allow PayPal to work in a multi-vendor marketplace 
like getgills.com. Um, well, we know they have it, right? Because they use it on eBay, but they wouldn't release it to us. So we couldn't use it on Get Gills. However, at dancefish.com, we can use it because that's not a multi-vendor marketplace. That's just me. That's just Dance Fish. So for everyone that wanted that so bad, we are implementing that on Dance Fish. Um, it's still a juggernaut. And believe it or not, we found some real issues with it. Like, am I allowed to talk about this? What? Can I talk about the security issues? No. Jonathan's frowning. Let's just say that we were very surprised when we went to implement PayPal at, at some gaping issues that were there. So Jonathan, security issues. So Jonathan has spent the last few days um, building our own security to go on top of PayPal so that when you purchase fish on dancefish.com, it's actually secure. <laughs> so, um, so that's what we've been working on. So pretty soon you'll be able to pay um, with PayPal on dancefish.com like a lot of people want to. Okay, a couple last things here and then we'll get to you guys. Hang on. Uh, da, da, da. Let me just, I got a list, got a list. It's the only way I can keep things straight. Okay, last thing before the giveaway, let's talk about the import. So a couple things with this import that are different. One is we decided to take control of more of the supply chain. Um, we've been having trouble finding brokers and agents that would actually care for the fish properly when they first, land, first landed in, in the United States. Uh, give them a, a water change, make sure that they were taken care of um, before they came to us. See, I used to be able to do all this myself, but live fish are no longer landing at the Denver airport. Uh, to clear customs and wildlife inspections. Um, so we're having to do that other places. So we decided to do that through Los Angeles and instead of trying to, I've been through lots of people and I can't find anyone that does a job that's up to our standards. So instead we decided to do it ourselves. So flew down to Los Angeles last week, set up a import reception um, and water change station, basically a little shipping hub down in Los Angeles. I have an old friend and a great guy named Steve that is doing that with me and a, another total fish geek, you know, longtime Aquarius club member, all that, uh, that I've known for several years named Ross are helping with this. And what we did is we spent um, a, a day just getting all the supplies, getting all set up, getting the water in there and bubbling and aging and all that. So we got this little facility all set up with tables and containers for water um, in an oxygen canister with the, um, you know, dispensers, the little air guns, um, all the bells and whistles that we would need to do this. And then on, um, on Wednesday, so we did that Tuesday. On Wednesday, the fish arrived, and the three of us just spent all day caring for the fish. So we changed the water in all the bags, we, we checked on their health, we triaged them, all that stuff. And I'm happy to report that it seems like that worked well and is going to be totally worth it. Um, it. The fish came and they looked a lot better than they usually do. The water in the bags was a lot clearer than it usual. Like, we could see a big difference basically when we re when we received the fish on our end. Now we learned a lot, there's a couple things we need to change, uh, details to make it even better, but in general, this is a good thing. It was worth the time, effort, and expense to set this up. So um, basically we're just having to take more control of the process because it's the only way we can ensure that it's done right. Um, I mean, what's right? Uh, to our standards, right? So that's happening. Another cool thing that happened is we brought in a lot of Corydoras this order, um, a ton of different species of Corys, and some of them had some issues. So I talked to the supplier, the exporter, the breeder, also the breeder, and was like, here's what's going on, da 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 da. And we went back and forth and, and talked about it. And they have agreed from now on to individually bag every Corydora that they ship me. So that's a big victory. So, and, and if they're watching, I want to thank them. Just I think that was awesome of you to say you would do that. So we now have an exporter out of Indonesia that's agreeing to individually bag fish 
um, at least all the corridors at this point um, for the from now on. So that was a great development because that'll really help, um, especially corridors. The thing is, you put a bunch of corys in a bag, they've got all these spines, right? So A, they can release toxin, but even if they don't do that, they can still spine each other. And sometimes you can have real issues with corys that you don't have with other fish. So that's going to be a huge help. And then the last thing before the giveaway, and this is about the import as well, is this is a really exciting, really special import for us. In the past, most of the imports we've brought in have been valued between $30,000 and $35,000. Uh, that's about our normal import. This time, it's valued at $100,000. So it's a, a, it's a lot, it's a lot of fish. Um, but B, we were able to find some really cool stuff. It's pricey, some of it, not all of it. We got some bread and butter stuff like Celestial Pearl Danios and Kubitai Rasboras and stuff like that. But um, about a third of this is really rare stuff, hard to find stuff, and, uh, and fairly pricey. So we were able to get some amazing fish in. I can't tell you about them today. I'll tell you all about them next week. Um, if I tell you today, it's just... I'll get so many emails about hold that for me and I want that and it just gets really crazy and, and I don't have a good way to manage it. But next Wednesday, I'll tell you about it because they'll be released for sale, I, I would imagine Friday of next week. But stay tuned, there's some stuff that, that I can almost guarantee some of you have never seen in person. In fact, it was really cool when we were changing the water. Um, so, so Ross, who's helping us, has been in the industry for a long time knows this stuff and he's been an aquarist for a long time a hobbyist and this is what he did for a, a living as well it still kind of does right um and yeah I, this was such a fun moment so one of the bags of fish which i'll tell you about next week he lifted up the bag and he's like his eyes got big and, <laughs> and he was like super excited this is a fish that's holy grail for him it's something he's been trying to get forever um and it was so cool to like just random you know picking up fish and taking care of them picking up fish taking care of them picking up a fish and just like stopped and like just you know saw something that he'd been dreaming about for years so we have some stuff like that and I, I think we have some stuff in that that you've probably never seen before ever and uh, maybe seen some pictures and been like man I wish I could get that and we've got a few species like that so it's pretty exciting stuff um, but that's enough about all the updates and all the cool stuff going on here. We're just real excited. Like, there is so much progress being made. It is amazing having Jonathan here and Mandy here. Um, it, it frees me up to, like, finally take care of some things but, that I've been meaning to do and set up for a long time, but it just haven't been able to break away the time and focus to make it happen. So it's such an exciting time to be here. I... I, I <laughs> I hope everyone in their life gets a chance to do what they really want to do. Like, I know, I know, I know that everyone's in different situations with like family responsibilities and career and everything, but at some point in your life, I hope you get a chance to do what you love because uh, there's nothing like it. It's, it's a super exciting time. Okay, to the giveaway. So here's what we're giving away. If you don't know this fish, this is an Odessa barb. And they are every bit as pretty as this. I've, I mean, maybe that was saturated a little bit, but it's not inaccurate. A fully fired up male is nice and black with bright red and yellow dorsal. That's, that's just what they look like. Um, even when they're not fired up though, they're still a, they're still a pretty fish, something like, like this. But um, when they're fired up, it, it's something to behold. And the ones we're giving away, in case you missed it at the beginning, aren't just ordinary Odessa barbs. First of all, they're hobbyist bred and raised by Merrick um, down in Laramie, Wyoming. Um, but also, they're the Greg Sage line. So Merrick got his from Greg Sage at Select Aquatics, which is a line that has been worked on by Greg for many years 
and is just something very, very special. So if you would like to win these, and I'll send you three at least, I can fit three in a box, um, then the hashtag is Barb. <laughs> if Candy were here, I think she'd give me a thumbs up. <laughs> hashtag B-A-R-B. So all you have to do to enter the giveaway to win these fish, um, to be entered to win these fish is in the chat, just type Hashtag B-A-R-B. -B. No spaces or anything. Doesn't matter if it's capitalized. Just hashtag B-A-R-B. -B. And um, you'll be entered to win at least three of these. And I'll, I'll probably do... Gold Nugget Pleco Tetra is asking what, what ratio. I'd probably do um, a male and two females. If I send the larger ones. And if I don't... If I send the smaller ones, then they'll be on sex. Just because I can't... I can't sex the smaller ones yet. If you don't know about this fish, I've kept them many times. They're very active and very fast for the f to the food. And if you don't have them in large groups, then they can be fin nippers. Um, what I found though is if you keep them in large groups, I haven't had problems. I tend to keep them in large numbers and I've, I've never had a problem. Um, the reason I say if you keep them in small groups, they can be fin nippers is that's what friends of mine that keep them have experienced. But myself, I, I've never experienced them nipping fins, um, but I've always kept them in large numbers. So that's kind of one of the secrets with barbs. If you get a big group of them, they tend to not be an issue. Now, there are some species that are just really peaceful, like the dwarf gold barb. That's a peaceful barb. Um, but... These guys are not nearly as aggressive as a tiger barb, but if you don't have a larger group, you might get some fin nipping. So just be aware of that. Um, really active, really quick to the food, so I wouldn't keep them with anything that's a slow eater like a wild type betta. Um, if you keep them with quarries and plecos, they can outcompete them if you have a big group of them with, with your quarries and stuff, because they'll just eat all the food before it gets down to the quarries. You have to kind of find a way to spot feed the slow feeders if you have those in the tank. So a couple things to be aware of there. But really cool fish um, and it's been in the hobby for a long time for good reason because they're absolutely gorgeous. Alright, that is all I got. So after me rambling for 28 minutes, we'll get to you guys. That's what's going on with me. Let's see what's going on with you. So Let's get to questions and comments. Um, I'm starting now, so if you left a question or comment earlier, if you'd relist it now, because odds are it got cut off and I won't be able to see it, but I'll scroll up and see as far as I got, or as far as I can, what we've got to respond to. Oh, this is good. Dragon Lair says, my group of eight Odessa barbs live, live with uh, a male and three female Milano uh, Glossolepis wanamensis, that's a rainbow fish with no fin nipping. Yeah, you've got a group of eight, so that's that's good. That's good. Good to know. In fact, while we're here, would you all chime in with your experiences with the Odessa barbs in aggression or non-aggression? If you just let us know, yeah, I had this many, no problems. I had this many, no problems. Because I'm kind of anecdotally saying if you have them in small numbers, you can have fin nipping just because that's what people that I know that have kept them have experienced, but myself, they've never been a problem. Again, large groups is kind of how I do it though. KP is throwing down a super chat, $2 with a fox cat thumbs up. Hey, right back at you, KP, thank you so much. I don't see a comment, but I do see the sticker. If there was a comment, I I apologize, but literally look, I can see the sticker here, but it's it says no super chats. <laughs> so <laughs> YouTube's <laughs> kind of <laughs> dropping the ball there. <laughs> but thank you so much, KP. Always appreciated. Never required, but the super chats do help. Swamp Thing. Those Odessa barbs from Greg are something. Now that I see them, I'm thinking about putting them in a planted tank with the beautiful black Venezuelan quarries I got from you. Cool. That sounds that sounds awesome. Um, as long as you find a way to spot feed the quarries, because those Odessas, <laughs> they eat quick. 
Kaylee's Aquatics and Exotics is linked to get Gil's store. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, Bob. Oh, and before I get too far in, thanks to all my mods for being here. Like, like every week, I just want you to know I appreciate you because I know you're doing this voluntarily, and it's just amazing to me that you do it every week. So thanks for doing it. It's a huge help. Alex Repco, hello, Dan. Neon yellow calico platies already have babies. Thank you for the great fish. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. I, that really is my favorite favorite platy ever. They're just so, so pretty. In fact, let me shut my Instagram here so I don't get too many windows open. Um, let me show you this. There's a few videos on my channel about this fish just because I like them so much. In fact, one of the earliest videos I ever did um, before I was ever, I was just using it to host postings on Aquabid. So I would just put my videos on YouTube so that I could have a posting in Aquabid with a video in it. <laughs> I wasn't making a channel or anything. Um, and one of the very first videos I did way back when with a tiny little cheap cell phone um, is these guys murdering zucchini, just devouring zucchini. And these are the fish. I just love them. I like the, the bright neon iridescent scales of the orange, well not all of them have orange, but of the yellow and, and if they have it, the orange, contrasted with those black dots, they just, the pictures don't do them justice, I know that's, I say that all the time, but it's really true for most fish, but literally they glow from across the room, they're, they're just my favorite platy because they're so pretty. Most platies, you know, I, I like all fish. But I'm walking through a pet store or a wholesaler or whatever, and the platy section, I kind of just pass through. The reason I like these is one time I was passing through and I was just like, Foom, they caught my eye, right? And I just stared at them for a while and I was just like, wow. <laughs> they just stand out that much. And I don't mind like, it sounds like I'm overselling. I don't even mind like describing them that, that highly or that... I don't know, luxuriously? I don't know the word, because I'm not worried about overselling these. I can't oversell them. They're, they're that pretty. Gold Nugget Pleco Tetra, what ratio of males to females already got that one? Okay. So now we're in the hashtag barb section. That's literally, those are literally the only um, questions and comments that I could get to, because chat jumped. So feel free to leave your questions and comments. Hang on, Swamp Thing. I saw you left one, but it jumped on me. Swamp Thing, I will give you two times whatever Ross is offering you <laughs> for all of those fish he likes so much. <laughs> Here's what we're going to do. We're going to get a mat and some posts and some ropes, and we'll have a no-holes-barred <laughs> matchup between Ross and Swamp Thing. <laughs> Punchy Baines, if you have a comment or question for Dan, please do the at symbol before typing Dan's fish. Exactly. Exactly. Then it'll get to me. Although, actually, let's experiment real quick. I think we found that if you just start typing Dan's fish, no, it's not doing it. Yeah, it does have to be the at Dan's fish. That's funny. The other day, Jonathan and I were playing around with this, and we thought that we didn't have to type at Dan's fish. We just had to type Dan's fish for it to highlight. But I just tried it and didn't work. So maybe some can, some can't. I don't know. But yeah, at symbol Dan's fish. Bunny Viper. Hello, Dan. Hey, Bunny Viper. Good to see you. Thanks for being here every week. It's like, it's like so cool to have like regulars you know it makes me feel like i'm going to my local club meeting and seeing bunny viper again right hi dan i'm interested in learning how to intentionally breed those epiplates achaeochilles for this purpose would you research sex fasciatus behavior mine are four now mine are four now my four are now 11 got it <laughs> reading's hard my four are now 11 like to raise a bunch First of all, that's awesome that you're getting the killifish breeding bug. That hit me 30 years ago and it never left. I'm glad you got it. It's, it's a fun bug. Um, 
But yeah, it, Sex fasciatus breed the same. Any Epiplates breed the same. It's their top spawners generally. Um, usually you use a spawning mop made of yarn if you're trying to collect eggs and really get high yields. Um, however, they generally want to spawn towards the surface. So what I found is if you take the yarn mop and put a cork in it and then a couple inches later another cork and then a couple inches later another cork so you get like this line across the top instead of a mop hanging because if it's hanging they'll only spawn in a very limited section and they're more likely to eat their eggs I feel like I need a mop to show you this this will be worth it I, I need 20 seconds I'm just gonna go grab a mop so I can show you what I'm talking about start the counter go And we're back. Okay. So, here's a spawning mop, right? Normally what you do when you put a spawning mop in for surface spawners like Epiplates is you would take these and tie a cork on it and this would kind of hang down here. The problem with that is a lot of Epiplates want to spawn right at the top and you've got this cork and then the mop starts. So the mop isn't right at the top. and even if it is, most of the mop is down here, right? So it'll only spawn here, and that's a small surface area, and it exposes a lot of eggs, and then the Achilles can eat the eggs easily. You don't want them to be able to eat the eggs. So instead, if you put a cork here, and a cork here, and a cork here, and a cork here, and you have the mop floating across the top of the aquarium, and you can kind of bury the corks in the mop if you make it nice and thick like this. Then you get this across the top of your aquarium, floating right below this, right, right, the, the top of the mop is touching the surface of the water, basically. Then you have all this surface area for them to lay eggs in, and a lot more of the eggs get deep in the mop and get hidden and don't get eaten. So if you want to use a mop method, um, that's how I would do it. Now, sometimes you can have an issue. If you have enough corks, this isn't an issue, but if you just have like one here and one here, then the mop will go like this on you. So you have to get some kind of, if, I mean, lots of corks is the key, but another way to do it is if you get like something stiff, like a straw or some rigid airline tubing to keep the corks apart, then you just have to have one here and one here and the whole thing will kind of float. So there's different ways to do it. Um, but basically, you want as much of the mop at the surface as possible. That way they have more laying surface and they tend to eat less eggs because more of the eggs get buried in the mop far enough not to get eaten. All right. Ugh. There's something gritty in my water. I think something fell out of the mop into my glass. <laughs> that was gross. All right. Okay, so... Bunny Viper, I hope that helps. Oh, and then you remove the mop and put it in another tank to let them hatch. Or if you want to pick out the eggs and put them in a little container of water, um, maybe with some methylene blue to help them not fungus, then you can get a lot hatching that way. Brian Maramba, have you ever bred any of the Stiffidon gobies? I have not. Um, well, let me revise that. I'm sure that they spawned for me, but I've never bred the babies. I've never bred the babies. <laughs> yeah, that's difficult to do. I've never raised the babies. The issue with Stiphodons, Sicyopus, Sicyopterus, um, most of those types of spe species is that the, from what I understand, and I'm, I'm learning a lot more about gobies now because I'm bringing more in, but I'm still a bit of a noob at them. But from what I understand, from my reading, is that they're one of those species that are like a salmon, right? The, the parents spawn, the young are washed out to sea, the young become part of the plankton cloud in the ocean. After a certain size, they grow up a bit, drop out of the plankton cloud, and then swim back up the river. What that means is, in order to raise them, you have to start them in salt water and change them back to fresh, and that's not even the hard part. They're like Empire Gudgeons and things that have the same life cycle. Although Empire Gudgeons, there's some freshwater locked species, so salt might not be so important to some of these.
But because of being part of the plankton, um, plankton cloud, sorry, fish that do that tend to be more larva than fry. So they're very undeveloped. They're tiny. Their mouths are not fully developed. They can't like actually go eat food. They have to kind of just swim around and hope food absorbs. There's, um, and I mean general here, because I, I, I don't know the exact thing for each of these species of gobies and gudgeons. But in general, they eat only certain things and they're very small things that they have to eat. So they're very difficult to raise. So no one, as far as I know, is breeding and raising Stiphodons, Sicyopus, or Sicyopterus gobies. Rhinogobius, that's different. Rhinogobius, they hatch and they're well-formed fry and they can, you know, by the time they're free swimming and they can eat, you know, baby brine shrimp and stuff like that. So those you can raise. But Stiphodon, that's rough. I don't know of anyone that's doing that because of their uh, half salt water life cycle. Now, again, I'm a bit of a noob. I don't know if that is true for all Stiphodons. It's also possible I'm getting Stiphodons mixed up with a different genus or something, but but I'm pretty sure from my reading that they have like, I forget the, the word for that, where they, there's some kind of official word for starting your life fresh, developing in the ocean and then returning. And I forget the name of that word. So Brian, if you, if you want to breed them, I think you got your work cut out for you. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's pretty difficult. Jason Betts, Jason. <laughs> It's now Jason. Sean Connery. <laughs> Jason Betts. Sorry. I am looking for a good schooling quarry that doesn't hide all the time. Any suggestions? Any quarry in a big enough school. I think generally why quarries hide is because they're not comfortable, because they're not kept in, in large enough numbers. In my experience, um, quarries will hide for the first couple of weeks that I have them. But after that, they're out and they're bold and I've never had a species of quarry and I've kept a lot that hides after it, you know, gets used to the tank after the first couple of weeks that hides if it's in a, if it's in a group. So I think the key there is groups. Um, but one schooling quarry, if you're looking for one that's more schooling than another, would be the tiny little dwarf quarries, like the pygmy quarries, Corydoras pygmaea, um, Habrosus hastatus, um, in my experience, the little pygmy quarries tend to school around more than any other species. And the nice thing about them is since they're so small, you can get a larger group because, you know, they don't take, there's not as much bio load per fish. So, yeah, a little one inch quarry versus a two, two and a half inch quarry, right? They're also more mid-water swimming. I mean, they, they, they get on the bottom and all that, but... Um, They'll also swim more mid-water than most quarries, like bottom third of the tank. They spend more time in the water column than your average quarry. Stephen P. 2003, Aquartics. <laughs> Just curious, do you have a policy for fish deaths after they go into a customer's tank? No, the, I don't really have a policy. The, the official policy is um, send me a picture within an hour of delivery um, in the sealed bag. That's the official policy, but we do a lot more than that. The reason we have that policy, and it's unfortunate we have to have it, but the reason it's stated that way is when people buy expensive fish, uh, spotted Congo puffers, some of the different placostomus, uh, blackberry, silver dollars, with, with your average you know, little community fish, this doesn't happen a lot. But once you get into the price of your money fish, People start getting real dishonest, and um, not everybody. It's a very small percentage, but it's a. It happens. It happens with some regularity, and so to prevent people from just saying, "Oh, the fish arrived dead," and wanting a refund, right, uh, on a pricey fish, we have that policy. This is to weed out problems. But in reality, I'll always work with someone um, if there's issues. Usually, we know there's issues when the fish first arrive. Like, oh, that's not swimming right. Oh, that doesn't look quite right. Um, and people will 
you know, I encourage people to email me and say, let me know how they arrive. And people do. Usually, it's all love letters. Hey, everyone looks great. Da, da, da. But every now and then, it's, you know what, these don't look right to me. In which case, we respond and we try to support and help figure out how to care for the fish with the person. And we're also made aware that I'm like, you know, let me know in a week if, if that thing hasn't settled and all that. You know, let me let me know. So basically we work with the customer on a case by case scenario. And and the only time we don't fully guarantee we guarantee every fish, the only time we don't either resend or refund a lost fish is if someone is being dishonest and um, that does happen and there are some times when we actually know because we have enough information to know um, but that's that's the only time and that that happens pretty rarely but it does happen so the policy basically is if if there's an issue and you suspect it's on my end like how we kept the fish or it happened during shipping or anything that anything that happened before the fish got to you um, if you suspect that as a customer, let me know, let me know as soon as you know, and I'll work with you. And that's kind of the official policy. Um, but we just have that, you know, picture of the fish in the sealed bag within an hour of delivery um, to prevent the dishonest people. And, and also one other thing is if you leave the bag or the box of fish out on your porch all day, and it's 30 below, or it's 105 degrees and it's in the sun, that's a problem. So that's why we say within an hour, because we don't want people to, to just be leaving the fish out in the heat or in the cold. So we're trying to encourage people to take care of the fish promptly upon arrival, because the fish need that. So, um, or at least get them indoors, right? You know, have a neighbor pick them up, something. Ooh, everything here is gritty. That mop was full of sand. I'm switching water sources. <laughs> so, I, I guess that's what I would say about that. This bottle of water, Voss water. So, <laughs> I I accidentally forgot my uh, water bottle in Los Angeles, and I was at LAX trying to get out of Los Angeles. I didn't have any water. I knew I was going to have a a couple flights, right? There was a layover and all that, um, and I needed water. So I went to a little coffee shop in the airport. It's like, do you have any bottled water? They're like, yeah, and they pointed to this. So I went and I got this. This is, <laughs> they rang it up, eight bucks for a plastic, it's not glass, it looks fancy. It's just a plastic water bottle. It's like artesian water from Norway. Really, we had to bottle water, cart it all the way across the ocean from Norway. This is so silly. Anyway, that was my water bottle story from my trip to Los Angeles. Kelly Foreman throwing down $4.99 and saying, you've got me excited about Odessa barbs. Boom, everyone should be excited about Odessa barbs. They're stunning. They're really cool. And they're not right for every tank, but they are really cool. And I mean, these are the Sa Select Aquatics line, right? Greg Sage. You can't go wrong. New Mexico Aquatics. I have Greg's Odessa's, not nippers, with six or seven adults. Okay, cool. And they started breeding right away in my quarantine tank, pH of eight. I also keep them quite cool. Summer low 70s. Yep, winter down to 58. Ooh, that is quite low. Cool. Thanks, Bobby, for sharing your experience with them. I really, really appreciate that. So it sounds like they're not as nippy as some of my friends have experienced. That's good. Uh, Jerome Horn saying, I found the same to be true. I feel like eight or nine or more is the magic number. Cool. Six or seven is working for Bobby. I'm just scrolling to see. Here we go. Cancer train. From my experience, a dozen in a 75 gallon will keep themselves busy enough not to bother others. Cool. This is great. Thanks, guys. Um, Rusty Braids is asking, can Odessa barbs be kept with Rombo barbs? I've never tried it. I don't, there's no red flags going off in my head though. Um, hopefully both are in decent numbers. 
I have not tried that combo though, so I can't really say for sure. Um, this is great. <laughs> Mike's Aquatics and things. Mobs for volunteers. Bob, you lied to me. <laughs> Jay McCain, I had 10 Odessas and 10 Green Tigers and a few miscellaneous swords in a tank, no problem. Yeah, I mean, groups really does help with barbs for sure. It's nice to hear, this is so great. People are saying actual numbers and experiences. Thank you guys, this is great to hear from the horses' mouths. <laughs> You're all horses now, I guess. Sorry, chat jumped, jumped. The, the next one, I, oh no, I got him. The next one I can see is RB Animals Rescue. How will they do with snails? Um, mine ate snails, if I remember right. They aren't necessarily the most efficient at it, but I think they'll nip at snails, so I'd be real careful about that. If you have some like nice rabbit snails or apple snails or something. Um, wait, can you have apple snails anymore? Sorry. Um, what's the one you can have? Mystery snails. <laughs> Fish and wildlife are going to show up at my door now. Orange cones. I was thinking of a dozen Odessas in a tank for fattening up my headstanders. Good idea? Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In case you don't know, she was uh, she was kidding. Yeah, Odessa's would outcompete headstanders. Did you see this? Ask Get Gills. Yes, I did. So it did work for you. So for for mods, at least for Get Gills, that's Random Arms, also known as Jonathan. Random Arms can just type Dan's fish. He doesn't have to have the at symbol. That's interesting. Wild discus and rainbow fish. I kept six Odessa barbs with Macolakai rainbow fish and quarries in a 55 gallon tank, and it did not work. They are aggressive eaters, and some became territorial, nipping at the other fish. So I had a similar experience, but it was with uh, filament barbs. I had about eight of them in with Macolakai rainbows, adult Macolakais, three inches or so, and um, they like they sheared the dorsal fins right off those things. So, but that was filament barbs. Um, but that's good to know too. Wild Discus tried six Odessas with rainbows and quarries and nipped all the other fish. So maybe a bigger group than 15. I'm sorry, than 15, than six. <laughs> I, I said 15 because I was reading the Zen Ginger. Can these barbs go with a pack of about 15 auto sinkless happily in a 29 gallon tank? I wouldn't put Odessa barbs with auto sinkless. Um, that's just my gut feeling. I've never tried it. But autos are small and slow, and so I would be hesitant about that. But I've never tried it. Maybe 15 people will chime in now and be like, no, it works great. When Didymus. <laughs> I like that name. It just, the way it flows off the tongue, the, the, the tracking of it. When Didymus. I don't know, it's fun to say. I don't know the At Dan's Fish works on a phone, at least it doesn't work on my phone, on computer now. So that's true. Um, on my Android phone here, uh, the At Dan's Fish or the At thing does not work. I don't think that's every phone, but on mine it does not. So not every device will work. So if you are not on a device that allows for that, if you try and it just doesn't work, um, if you would uh, maybe, I don't know, call a mod's attention to it and the mods will let me know. That's kind of the best way to do that. In fact, Skipper's Aquariums uh, often looks out for those. It's one of our mods. Lefty3213A. Dude, the algae eater and two-spot cat I got from you last year are so big. I love them. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that they're doing well for you. So the two-spot cats, my understanding, if I remember right, is those are going to top out at about four or five inches. Um, would you let me know if that's true? Because if it's not, I think I need to change their description on my website. Um, I don't think I've ever seen them more than four or five inches, but I've never kept them super long term. So, Lefty, please let me know. And I can don't guess. If you could actually take a tape measure and, and take a look-see, I would really appreciate knowing that. Muppet929, with no at sign before, it should still highlight. Cool. Give it a whirl, people. <laughs> if it doesn't work, then just retype it with that dance fish, I suppose. Joseph Morshimer. Hey, Joseph, it's good to hear from you. Hope you're doing well. My neon calico platies are definitely fattening up and ready to pop. I expect to come back from Aquashella, Chicago with a tank full. 
great. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, I mean, they just, they're platies, right? So they're generally pretty easy and prolific and everything. But this specific color pattern, I don't know, it's like happiness in a fish. They, they just, if there was like Webster Fishionary, right? And each word had a fish by it. When you got to like happy or happiness, it would have a picture of this neon yellow calico platy for sure. <laughs> In fact, that would be a fun like little thing to post, like different words with a fish as the definition. <laughs> <coughs> oh, I need more of this apparently. Got sand in my craw. The fishy mailman made it. Hey, fishy mailman. It is good to see you. I'm glad you could make it. I'm here almost every week. Hail the Lurker Nation. Yep. I'm with you. I'll hail the Lurker Nation. <laughs> Brian Maramba. Henry at Dance Fish. When do these new fish drop? Oh, okay. So um, I'll talk about them next Wednesday. We'll go over the list together. Uh, next live stream next week. And they should be available on the website um, that Friday of next week. So we'll talk about on Wednesday, and then two days later, they should become available. We're working like mad right now to try to get the descriptions writ, because a lot of these species are new. I've never had a lot of them available for, for sale um, on the website before. So we're, well, we're writing all the descriptions new. Um, if you check out the descriptions, you'll see gradually better descriptions being written for everything and I want to help everyone that's help I want to help I want to thank everyone that's helping make that happen um, and yeah and, and, and Jay if you're listening I've been crazy busy with the new import in the trip to Los Angeles and, and all that um, I haven't forgot you <laughs> I haven't forgot you Mitchell Broom for things that lay at the top of a mop, I use eyelash yarn instead of regular yarn. Then I just drape it across the top of the tank. Huh. What is eyelash yarn? Eyelash extensions? Eyelash yarn. What is this stuff of which you speak? Oh, yeah! Look at that. It's like super fine. That makes sense to me, how that could, how that could work better. Yeah. Thanks for the tip. Mitchell, I appreciate that. Orange cones. I use a chunk of those pool noodles to keep the yarn mops floating. Yeah, you can do that. Yep. Put the mop kind of down in the middle. All right, now I'm going to get sand in my other bottle. That's got a lid. So here's a pool noodle, right? My, my hand. This is a pool noodle. If you stick the mop in like that, then you can kind of put it around like that so it floats. A lot of it's still at the bottom, but a lot but more of it's at the top. Yep. I'm doing a bad job. There. There we go. Full noodle mop. Yep, that's not a bad trick either. I suppose you could twist tie it onto a pool noodle as well. Oh more sand. <laughs> this thing this mop is so sandy. It's all over my desk now. Alright. Thanks. This is, I really think it's awesome when the community just like shares their knowledge with everybody. Thanks for being here and being active and helping folks out. Cancer Train, the term for fish like salmon. Okay. Andromus, anadromus, anadromus. Despite being Alaskan, I only know this term because my favorite beer is called anadromus black sour ale. <laughs> I'm getting an education in the bar. <laughs> Anadromous. Thank you. Yes. I, like, I've read that word several times, but I don't think I've ever said it out loud before. Joe Coffey concurs. Anadromous. Fishes that migrate into fresh water to spawn. Maybe that is the word you're looking at, thinking of. Yeah, I, th I think you're right. Although in this case, they don't migrate to spawn. They actually live in the fresh water. It's just their babies are washed out to develop in the salt water and then they, they return. But it's not like salmon where they just return to spawn and then they die. It's not that. They live long term in fresh water and spawn over and over and over again. 
But yeah, Joe Coffee, I think you're right. Mountaintop Puffer Keeper. Cool. I, I'm excited. Oh, I, oh man. I wanted to hear more about your puffer babies, how they're doing. <laughs> but anyway, any tips on mudfish? I mean, Sorgia and Sorgia, I, I, I haven't kept them. Um, I have a group for my 2022 breeding project. They're living with my butterfly fish colony in a 50 gallon, but hiding a lot. Are they nocturnal? If this is the fish I think it is, um, hang on. And I think I think it is. It's got that little like tube for a mouth. Um, hang on. Let me make sure I know what we're talking about. Yeah. So it is that one. So these are the mudfish. Um, they have this really neat little like hole for a mouth. It's a really unique little thing. They are on the list from Nigeria. I've always passed on them, though. I've never tried to bring them in because they seem so specialized. And I, I haven't dove down that wormhole to find out enough about them. And I haven't been able to find a lot of people that are keeping them. So I've always kind of passed because I'm not sure exactly what they need. That being said, um, Mountaintop Puffer Keeper, I'm sorry, but I don't have any direct experience with that fish. Um, I don't think I've actually ever seen one in person, so I can't help you. I think they were nocturnal, though, from my research. Oh, it's been a while. I haven't read about them since the last import from Nigeria. That was several months ago. So anyone here, if you've kept that fish, if you would chime in, let Mountaintop Puffer Keeper know your experience and help them out in their quest to uh, raise those up and breed them. Waiting Sage, do you keep Bolivian ram stocked fairly often? Yeah, I would say so. They're one of my favorites. They're peaceful, they're easy, and uh, they're colorful. I've bred them several times. So I do tend to keep them around because uh, I think they're just a great fish for people that are looking for, you know, something for their community aquarium. A lot of people want a centerpiece fish, and I think that they fit the bill. Uh, surround those with some, you know, smaller schooling fish, and they look great. I know you have some now, but I'm a few months out from ordering. Thanks in advance. I, I would I would assume waving sage that I would have them later. I get them fairly often. Can't see the future, but if the past is any indicator, then yes, I'll have more. By the way, if anyone's a little sales pitch here, if anyone is looking for some Bolivian rams, the ones we have in right now are as good as they get. They're great colored. The batch came in solid. Um, we had a little ammonia spike in the tank, so there were a couple problems, but that wasn't the fish's fault, and it wasn't the importer, uh, the exporter's fault. That was my fault. Um, but we fixed that real quick, and they've been rock solid. They're, 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 man, we got to get some new pictures of those. They look really good. Actually, I think we did get new pictures. Are those on the website now? Um, let me look. So I'm going to dancefish.com. I'm looking at uh, cichlids. Yeah. So these are the pictures of them. These are the actual fish we have in right now. I think that's an old video. But the thumbnail isn't old. Yeah, these are the actual ones. Yep. This one might be an old one. I can't remember for sure. But yeah, they're, they're looking absolutely really nice batch all right toad tamer how do you transition a biological filter from fresh to high brackish for fish like monos hmm. so my experience with this is when I get new fish in I'll often put five parts per thousand salt in the aquarium before I receive the fish so that it's all salty when I put them in. I'm not sure how much salt you need, how brackish you're going, but in my experience, if you're going um, from fresh to five parts per thousand, that's not a problem. Now, if you have plants or... Here's where... 
I don't think that kills your nitrifying bacteria. Here's what it can do though. If you have like a bunch of algae in the tank and stuff like that, um, it can kill off your algae. It can kill off a lot of little microorganisms and things. So if your tank has a lot of algae in it and a lot of like, uh, you know, little animals from the microcosmos in there, um, and you put a bunch of salt in, you can shock the system in that, all that algae is gonna die, a lot of those little critters will die, and now you have an ammonia spike, and your water gets cloudy and all that stuff. So that can happen. So when I do it, these are bear tanks. Um, I can scrub them down, siphon them all out. I just have a sponge filter in there, that's all. And so if I scrub them out, make sure they're nice and clean, and then I put the salt in, I don't have issues. But I have had times when I've dumped a bunch of salt in and there's been algae or something and that all has died and then it's a big mess. So keep that in mind. So in my experience, I can go from zero to five parts per thousand without interrupting the biological filtration as far as I know, because I put fish in and I feed them and don't get ammonia spikes. But um, with the caveat that it can kill lots of other things and create an ammonia spike. 503 Aquatics throwing down $2.99 and giving me a fist bump right back at you, 503 Aquatics. Thank you so much. Super Chats are always appreciated. They're never required, but as you know, they do make my wife super happy. She likes it when money falls out of the computer screen. <laughs> Xanadu, do. <laughs> throwing down five bucks, planning an order, but now want to wait to see the new fish. See, this is the problem with telling you guys when I get new fish in. <laughs> Thanks for the better photos and summaries. P.S. Happy B Day to me. Well, happy birthday to you. I like it when you have a birthday because you throw money at me. That's have more birthdays, Santa Doo Doo. <laughs> Thanks for the super chat. Seriously, it's it's very much appreciated. Okay, chat jump. So I'm doing my best to get back to the top. It's 8:07. Okay, we've got some time. What do you guys think? We've got 199 people in here. I'm going to go ahead and do the giveaway. I'm not going to wait till the end. Um, I don't know. Sometimes we do the giveaway and it's like, oh, everyone left. <laughs> I don't know if that'll happen at this point or not, but we're going to do the giveaway um, just to reward folks that are here now and, you know, because sometimes folks just show up for the last five minutes hoping for a chance to win, right? So this is for at least three Odessa barbs, perhaps more. Um, I haven't decided which size I'll send. If I send the larger ones, it'll be one male and two females, at least as best as I can sex them. Um, if I send the smaller ones, they'll be unsexed. And the winner is... Wild Discus and Rainbow Fish. Wild Discus and Rainbow Fish. You have potentially won as long as you chime in within the next couple minutes and let us know you're here, because um, that is a requirement to be here to win. To collect your winnings. While we're waiting for wild discus and rainbow fish, Swamp Thing says, First thought seen the Voss water bottle. What the heck are you doing living in Wyoming drinking that stuff? Eight dollars was a bargain at LAX. Yeah, it's it's silly. And like I'm thinking of like how inefficient to like bottle this in Norway put it on a cargo ship and like ship it across the ocean to get a bottle of water. That just seems like so wasteful to me. <laughs> no offense to you Voss folks, but believe it or not, we do have water in the United States we can bottle. Um, all right, Wild Discus and Rainbow Fish is here. Well, congratulations, you have won the Odessa Barbs. Greg Sage line, Select Aquatics, can't go wrong, and uh, just please send me an email to dan at dancefish.com with your first and last name and your mailing address, and I'll send those out to you next week. Dave's Aquarium, thoughts thrown down, 99 cents, oh, and some love, a smiley face with hard eyes. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Appreciate the love and the dough. Steve Fletcher, five bucks. Last stream I watched live, I said I'd throw money at you, and here it is. Just a small thank you for all the info you provide. Steve, you're very welcome, and thanks for the super chat. Always appreciated. Never required, but it does make the wife super happy. 
And hey, I'm glad you're getting some value out of what we do here. That makes me feel good. Rusty Braids, thanks. Hey, you're welcome. By the way, love the username. Sounds painful, but I, I'm, I'm kind of picturing like a, an android, <laughs> like with wire hair braided up. <laughs> That's what I'm picturing. RB Animals Rescue. I have pond snails. Cool. So that was the question of, I believe, will the Odessa barbs eat pond snails? I have pond snails too, so with my experience, that's what they were eating. Pond snails and ram's horn snails. And they're not good at it, like barbs that'll actually like effectively like slurp them out. They just pick at them until the pond snail just goes like, I'm done. <laughs> so. You fish zone. Note, my free Roseline Barbs one back in March of 2021 giveaway are still enjoying life. Thanks for that giveaway. Awesome. Glad to hear it. Um, glad to hear that they are doing well. It, that makes our day. Uh, and it's not just me anymore. It's also, it's me, Jonathan, and, and Mandy. And so it's nice to hear stuff like that because then I can pass it on and it helps keep everyone motivated because we're on a mission here and you know generally we're moving forward every now and then we take a step back and it's like ooh those didn't do well right so it's nice it's nice to know both so we appreciate all the positive feedback but but really and I mean this if you have a problem with the fish we send you and you think it's on our end please contact us we, we want to know we it, it helps us as we're trying to like calibrate everything and it helps us know it's like an early warning system if one of our tanks is having a problem and it has not manifest here yet it's really helpful when people let us know when they have a problem because if multiple people do that then it's like ooh, that's something on our side we got to check into that so we like that we like both Orange cones, testing one fish, two fish, <laughs> red fish, blue fish. It worked. It's working. Swamp thing with no hashtag doesn't work for me. It highlighted for me though, swamp thing. Look at this. So it, it looks like you did it without the at symbol. Boom. Lumpy dog. Hey, lumpy dog. Good to see you. <laughs> Dan's makeup and hair looks great tonight. Kudos to the team. Next, they should work on his apparel. <laughs> what's what's wrong? What's wrong with this? <laughs> Grand Valley Aquarium Club. What's wrong with that? I do need to wear the Motor City um, Aquarium Club T-shirt, and I actually meant to do that today, but literally. I, I spent all day like caring for fish and like l literally I had to run over start the live stream as I was working on the quarantine system taking care of some fish that unfortunately need antibiotics so <laughs> so I didn't have time to run, run up and change like I meant to but you're right you're right <laughs> um, Stephen P 2003 Aquatics has thrown down 10 bucks Thank you, Stephen. Very, very much appreciated. Has a fox cat saying thank you and thanks right back at you. Always appreciated, never required, but every little bit does help. And I'll say it again. If you have not yet checked out Stephen P. 2003's YouTube channel and you want a good belly laugh, check it out. The last like three or four videos, um, have had original songs written for them so they're worth watching till the end they're hilarious and the last one I saw was death metal <laughs> and it was great <laughs> thank you Rico Stan for uh, prompting Stephen P 2003 Aquatics to do a death metal track <laughs> Swamp Thing throwing up five bucks Xanadu Doo is right I was gonna order some new fish today but now I'm waiting until the new import hits you sold your new order too well I know I know but you know it, it's fine it's I do I do think about that sometimes how to optimize the business but um, there's something worth just having a community to talk to yeah so <laughs> Gummy Shack the glow light Tetris I won from you a while back are doing great with some gold white clouds in a planet 29 gallon cube thanks so much 
Glad to hear it. I mean, long. T this is this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to get fish to you alive and healthy, and not just alive, so that you eat the cost when they die, but alive and healthy so they thrive for you. So this is nice to know. Let me dog. My balloon mollies look fat. <laughs> What's a good low calorie fish food I can feed them? <laughs> What do you do with Lumpy Dog? <laughs> like, what do you do with a comment like that? <laughs> no, that's hilarious. The Zen Ginger. A Dan's fish wife is going to be very confused when she sees eyelash yarn on his Amazon cart. Oh, I have a funny story. I wish she was here to tell it. So we were, were we married or just engaged? I can't remember. But we were either engaged or just married. I think we must have been just married. And we're in our apartment. Um, and I come home from school. I, I was working on the computer and then I had to go to school. We're in college. I come from home from school and, and, and Brenda is upset. My wife is upset. And I, was like, I could tell something was off. And after a little while, she's like, what is this? I was like, what is what? And she's like, come here. And she, I went over to the computer and she's like, what is this? It's like, what is what? And she's like, this email. And I looked at it and I was like, what do you mean? And she says, skinny, not the females. <laughs> and I was like, what? She's like, why are you reading emails about skinny females? And I was like, babe, it's skinny, no, the females. Nothobronchius is Notho is short for Nothobronchius, a genus of killifish. Here, please open their email and read it. And what it was was an email from a killikeeper that was concerned because his female Nothobronchius were skinny, and he was worried that they were getting pinched bellies, right? And was wondering how to treat them and make them all better. But my wife, her introduction to fish and marriage was, you know. <laughs> <laughs> worry some email titles <laughs> so eyelash yarn isn't gonna phase her at all <laughs> I hope she forgives me for telling that story uh, <laughs> I might be in trouble again Joseph Stanley hey do you know if chlorinated tap water will kill off all the scuds on some plants I'm having problems with insane scuds not letting egg scattering fish reproduce in the tubs I don't Mm. Do scuds even lay eggs? I think scuds give birth to live young, if I remember right. Like sometimes called like opossum shrimp for that reason, if I remember right. I geez, it's been a long time since I've looked at this, but I believe scuds do give birth to live young. So no, that would not work if I'm correct. What will work is this. Okay, on eBay, this is called Dimelin X. A tiny bit goes a long way. Like a, a quarter, like it's, I'd have to look at my dosage sheet, but just like a tiny bit treats 100 gallons. It's, it's pond strength stuff. It's called Dimelin X. Um, Diflu Benzeron? Diflu Benzeron. Um, what it does is it prevents crustaceans from molting. It inhibits their molt. So you don't want to use it. Oh, I'm not sharing it. There it is. Uh, so you don't want to use it in anything that has shrimp in it or any kind of other crustaceans that you want to keep healthy. But this will kill scuds. And HC Aqua, um, Jesse over in Hawaii had a big scud problem and he said he used it successfully. He just had to use it at three times the recommended dosage which is fine because on the bottle it says that they've tested it up to 10 times recommended dosage and it still has no ill effects on fish it's very safe it, it only prevents molten crustaceans so it's not gonna hurt your fish so i would say if you use that that will get rid of your scuds just be aware when a big population of scuds die and decompose, they make a big mess in your aquarium. 
Killers Aquatics throwing down 999 and throwing me my absolute favorite sticker, Pippi Longstocking, as a cheerleader. <laughs> Bob, thank you so much. Always appreciated, never required, and just thanks for everything you've done for, for me and for my company. I really appreciate you, brother. Ah, Joe Coffey. We're getting, we're getting, uh, getting, narrowing down the term for the salt freshwater fish whose eggs and young develop in salt water. So, catadromus, not anadromus. So, anadromus might be more like salmon that return to spawn, whereas catadromus might be closer to our stiffodon gobies. Um, yeah. Sounds good. I've read an anadromus before, but maybe catadromus is, is more correct. I'm not sure. I, my Latin is horrible. <laughs> New Mexico Aquatics. Hey, little Bobby. When I said my seven Odessas were not nippers, I only meant amongst themselves. Okay, good to know. I have always kept them alone in a planted aquascape 75. They are stunning against the green. Oh, they're stunning everywhere. They're just pretty fish. Okay, good. So they didn't nip each other's fins. You were not talking about in a community situation. Okay, thanks for clarifying. David Wycliffe. I've read that term before as well. Amphidromus. Fish which migrate between fresh water and sea salt water, but not for the purpose of breeding. Cool. Look at us. We're going down the, the, the true, like, nerdy rabbit hole today. We're going to get that term right. You know, I had thought before that I had read um, that other one that starts with an A that we were talking about before, anadromus. Because I remember that it started with an A, but maybe it was amphidromus. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Dan has, has left the building. Chuck, Chuck, not Chuck, Chuck Guggen, I'm going to say. Any tips on breeding uh, Xenotoka lion's eye? Maybe how old or how big they should be before they will breed? Chuck, that's one that I've never kept in bread. Um, I mean, I've been to Greg Sage's house and, and seen his libraries and stuff, but I personally have not kept lion's eye. Anyone here, if you've kept and bred and raised a lion's eye, would you chime in? I feel like Mike from Fish Tank Barn might have done that. I, I, if I remember right, Bob Steen thought had that fish as well. So there might be some folks in chat that could chime in for you, Chuck, but I'm not that knowledgeable on that species. Sorry, I wish I could help you. I just don't want to steer you wrong. All right, scrolling down here. And getting through the super chats. Hey, Merrick, good to see you. And thanks again for the awesome fish, the Odessa barbs. And um, I, I also got some uh, dwarf neon rainbows that Merrick bred and raised, and they're hobbyist bred and raised, and they look awesome. Thai Aquatics, hey, from Taiwan. What is the U.S. fish market like for hybrid paradise fish? Lots of cool color strains coming out here. Is this fish popular for outdoor ponds in the U.S.? So, Thai Aquatics, um, paradise fish are popular. We generally just have the blue and the albino. I mean, there's different species of paradise fish, but, but generally that's the, the kind of common one that we have. I've never seen a hybrid paradise fish. Um, so, if you're talking about paradise fish, I don't think we have a market yet because we're unfamiliar with that. But if that's an air in translation and you're talking about different bettas like alien bettas and stuff like that, those are very popular. Wild discus and rainbow fish, I am here. Okay, we finally got to the point where we had some winnings. Uh, Kayla's Aquatics posting my email, dan at dancefish.com, so that uh, wild discus and rainbow fish can email me to claim their winnings. Orange cones, for someone moving with an aquarium or a canister filter and a canister filter, could the filter media be kept viable by using a five gallon bucket of tank water to keep the water circulating for an eight hour drive? I think so. Um, but the moment it loses oxygen, 
it's going to be a problem. So yeah, if you took the filter media and cleaned it, I'm not saying sterilized it. I don't don't get me wrong, <laughs> but like rinse it out with tank water to get all the gunk out, because that stuff is going to take a lot of oxygen as it decays in your five gallon bucket and all the little critters living on that. So if you just kind of rinse that off with tank water, so you're left with the media and it's fairly clean, but it's still got the bacteria on it, right? You didn't sterilize it. Um, and you put that in a five gallon bucket and you maybe have a USB pump or something uh, with an air stone all the way at the bottom running oxygen through that media, then yeah, I think I think at least, at least enough of that will live, the nitrifying bacteria, to seed your filter when you set it up again, yeah but that stuff is very oxygen hungry so it, it kind of has to have that circulation in order to stay uh stay alive the zen ginger can you suggest another fish that would go well in a group with auto sinkless in a 29 gallon preferably something you carry well the easiest way to do that is to look at our website i mean i'm thinking right now of like the dwarf amber barbs um Let's just browse all products here real quick. Rice fish would be fine. Glow light danios would be fine. These Gertrude would be fine. Um, Bettas might try to eat them. Micro Lusty Storm's Eye, I think, might get like three inches, so that might be a little too robust. The Aphysim Caliurums down here would probably be fine. The Platys would be fine. Ivan Stafai would be great. These Golden Dwarf Barbs would be fine. These Emperor Carry Tetras would be fine. Okay, we'll do a few more. These would be great. The Luxothalmus, these poor... Oh, I'm not even sharing this. Duh. These Luxothalmus would be fine. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I, hopefully you heard them. Here's the Dwarf Amber Barbs I was thinking of. Beta brown orum would be great with them. Coolie loaches. Small quarries would be fine too. Tiger gobies would be okay with them. These pseudomugos would be okay with them. I think I think the tetras would be fine. Let's see here. These Gertrude would be great. The Gobies would be fine. Yeah, small, peaceful stuff. Sorry about not having the screen switched over at the beginning there, but, you know. <laughs> Sometimes, me brain goes fuzzy. Scott Schillinger, do you ever consider putting a save button or compare fish list on your website so you can see all the fish you liked on the pages? Okay, hang on, let me parse that in my mind. Do you ever consider putting a save button or a compare fish list on your website so you can see all the fish you liked on the pages? I mean, I always just use the cart for that. Uh, if I'm on Get Gills and I'm shopping around, um, I'll just load a cart and that saves them all together and then I can pick through and pick the ones I want. So I think the cart takes care of that if I'm understanding, Scott, uh, correctly what you're thinking about. All right, we have got time for one more. Xanadudu, new shipment and more fish also means bigger orders, for me at least. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. I, I get it. <laughs> I get it. Um, Cancer Train, I think he means the scuds are eating fish eggs. I mean, either way, the way to kill them is with Dimelin X. Um, oh, are you saying try to wash scuds out of a mop or off plants? Like you're trying to remove a plant from a tank full of scuds that has eggs on it, remove the scuds and then incubate them in another container? I don't know a way to do that. Uh, you can pick fish eggs out of the plants if they're like killifish eggs. You can like pick them off and put them in another container. Um, Joseph Stanley, egg scattering fish, not egg scattering scuds. Okay, I must have totally misunderstood Joseph's. Let me see. 
Oh, that was so far back up there, Joseph. I, I kind of want to go back and like reread it and see, and, and answer in a way <laughs> that <laughs> that would be more useful to you. But I can't, I can't scroll up that far anymore. It's cut me off, and we're at time. So Jesse, I'm sorry, or Joseph, Joseph, I'm sorry if I uh, screwed that up. But hey, welcome to live streams with Dan. I can screw him up with the best of them. So it's eight thirty. We're going to sign off, but not without thanking our moderators for being here and doing what they do every week. Thanks, guys. appreciate you so much. Thank you to everyone that threw money at us today. It's always nice when money, you know, just falls out of the computer screen onto your lap. Thanks for the super chats. Always appreciated. Never required. But, as you know, it does make my wife super happy. Um, every, everybody that left questions and comments, thank you. And everyone in the community that, like helped answer when I was like, you know, I don't have experience with that or ask for more information about Odessa barbs and your experience with them. Thanks for chiming in. That's really, really nice and helpful. Um, Hail the Lurker Nation. Everyone watching on replay. Hope you can be here live someday, but I get it. Life's busy. That's what replays are for. And um, is Punchy Paints going next? I, I did not. Again, I was messing with the quarantine system right before this. I did not look up if Punchy Paints is going next, but often Punchy Paints goes at nine mountain time, which is, you know, half an hour from now. Um, and you can get some cool art from her. She's an amazing artist, fantastic lady. So if you want more live stream nerdiness, check out Punchy Paints in about half an hour. She might be on. Anyway, we'll be back same time, same bat time, same bat channel next week. And we'll be revealing what we got in the import. And it's cool. It is, uh, it's cool stuff. Anyway, hope you have a good week. Until next time, bye-bye.